Hey everybody, welcome to a deck video. Essentially, I've had a couple people ask about what my mono growth optimal list would be. Um, so I figured I would just give it to you. Somebody somebody just sent me a comment. Um, maybe Bodgy? Bodgy, I'm going to say his name is Bodgy. Um, asking for this. And so I thought, why not? Uh, there's been a lot of changes. There's been a lot of additions to growth and I know some of my decisions are unorthodox, so I figured I would take a moment to explain some of them. So, without further ado, uh, standard mono growth. Um, I do do make a few changes, but this is my test server build. This is not what I get to play against real people or live on the real server. So, um, starting with the the wolf package: three ragged wolf, three mangy wolf, three gray wolf. They're just standard staple growth I think at this point they're still they're still the best best creatures um, not in the game or in the format or whatever but they're they're your best option as far as synergistic creatures go brother of the wolf is nice as well because it helps to power power up your great wolf and the wolves it makes get um, buffed by mangy wolf or get to attack sooner by mangy wolf so it's a a nice little group. Um, the non-wolf units, we have Kinfolk Brave, Sisters of the Bear, who's a new inclusion. I, I think I like Sisters of the Bear. I think it's just, it's on its own, it's just a good solid beater. That extra point of attack is nice against Order, um, as opposed to, you know, Brother of the Wolf, who has to hit twice against um, a Royal Spearman um, to take it out, so then it, it technically can't. So being able to attack for four damage is good keeping it alive is good um, it doesn't get super uh, wussy when you put languid on it it's still a 224 um, Kimfo veteran this is probably your best creature you um, just a just a monster um, does hits hits hard hits quick and then it can stick around and do more damage uh, rat kings in a new addition I like I think it it gives you either a buffer when you need it or uh, that chance to just swarm and capitalize on some of the, the other stuff in your deck that we'll go through in just a minute. Here's your sort of draw engine. Sister, Sisters of the Fox is nice because it's a, a creature that can also be buffed by your other stuff, but then it's also a good target to sacrifice for fertile soil. Um, so is Rat King. Rat King makes good stuff to sacrifice for fertile soil. You kind of have um, four things that you're willing to sacrifice. This is one Two, three, and four. So Ragged Wolf, Kinfolk Brave, Sisters of the Fox, Rat King. Um, other times you would you'd sacrifice like a Mangy Wolf or a Great Wolf if they're on their last legs. Um, so Fertile Soils, good for that. Um, with all your extra creatures, you've got Crimson Bull, Ancestral Totem, uh, Rallying, God Hand. So those are four sort of pump uh, extra attacks that you will used to capitalize on all these creatures you're running. So it says we're running 24, but really technically we're running 27 with the uh, addition of Rat King, even though I'm going to call all the three creatures it makes one creature, but um, an argument might be made for some to say say otherwise. Uh, after that, uh, Frostgale, Quake, this is your long game strategy to win games that you that are sort of out of control. One of the nice things about this this game is that for spells or structures or creatures that you draw that are sort of situational, it's very easy to sacrifice them and still get value out of them because you are sacrificing a scroll every turn. So you can play some situational stuff. Um, you can see like this Quake. I only played it twice um, with the statistics, but uh, I sacrificed it four times. But even those two times I played it, it's done, it did 25 damage and killed eight units. So there's there's value in this scroll beyond. Um, it's like when you need it, you have it, but when you don't need it, it's fine just to pitch it. Frost scales the same way. Um, now, comparatively though, I sacrificed it a lot less, and in the five times I played it, it's done 40 damage for me and killed five units. So it it more or less 
kills one thing every time it gets cast, and it does at least eight damage per per um, use. So that's that's pretty good, I think, for uh, two cost. Now this is where I I deviate the most probably from other players is I'm not running um, Pother, and I'm not running um, Transposition. So these two scrolls, I think make me more unique by going mono growth. I think I think a lot of the top players are still playing Pother and Transposition. I see I see the value in them. And that Pother lets you um, punch through for extra damage um, or to get pesky stuff out of the way. Um, and Transposition lets you do neat tricks and then they're also cantrips so they, they replace themselves. I I feel like the situations where they come up as being useful is less. Um, now you can see the stats on them. I've, I've actually only ever played them in um, uh, mono order, so I've never played them in this deck. But um, uh, I just I just don't know. I don't I don't think this adds consistency to your deck, and I don't think it adds value when there's other good things you can play in growth so I don't I don't run them um, I run uh, my last two spots are taken up by vitality well now again if we look at the stats I did I've sacrificed this, this vitality well the other one I, I don't have levels yet but um, this vitality well I've sacrificed four times I've played it three times and of the three times I've played it it's it's healed three or, or sorry it's healed 15 damage so an average of five five damage healed um, each time it was cast and it was destroyed twice so um, we say if it was destroyed twice that means it soaked three points of damage so it seems like it seems like there's there's value in keeping it because of these situational times where um, especially against like mono growth where they're playing frost scale now because if, if you're in growth you should be playing frost scale I think at this point I think it's pretty a pretty sure bet um, so then your Vitality Well sort of counters that Frost Gale. It also helps reset after Quake. Um, it helps it helps regenerate your guys after spiky damage. So you, you swing in with a Kinfolk Veteran, and then next turn you can, say, cast a, a four cost. Uh, you put you put down like a Brother of the Wolf and a Vitality Well or something. So it's a good it's a good round off your, your six on turn six. Um, but I, I can understand if other people don't like playing it. One thing I have noticed in this deck is that I'm, I run low on creatures, even though I'm running 24 and uh, 3 Rat Kings. So there is the option you could put in Eye of the Eagle as, as a replacement. Now for me, Eye of the Eagle used to be a staple until we got, I think, I feel like this is the critical mass of creatures, 27 seems like, like 30 maybe too much. but. Um, Sisters of the Bear is sort of replaced Eye of the Eagle for me. Um, at this point, I've I've gotten to the point where I don't need more creatures than um, than there are available. So it used to be there wasn't Sisters of the Bear. It was it was just um, Vader, which was good, but now is um, with everybody having all these one damage stuff. Vader seems a lot weaker. Bunny, you got Bunny, you got Beast Rat. None of these are really jumping out at me as like awesome stuff to play. So, but but I still wanted to play creatures. Breaker when he gets in, Breaker will be good. So we'll wait for that. But um, old Crone isn't in isn't in fro uh, Frost. Excuse me, Frostbeard. And then Noadi, Noadi before the nerf I think was fine. Frostbeard is just too slow. Um, and then Wild Wildling. Is it just a different deck? You need more buffs to make Wildling good, I think. And so you need to take out some of the higher end stuff, I think. Or take out some of your damage dealing to put in Wildling. So, um, and Kinfolk Jarl, again, uh, too, too slow for my taste. Um, it's just, you, f you put it down and then it sort of gets eaten by things and you've wasted a turn. Um, so I, that's what Eye of the Eagle was doing at that point, was... was representing another creature of the 
good creatures that you wanted to play. But I think we're getting to the point where you just want to play good creatures instead, and then um, Eye of the Eagle no longer has the value that it did. Um, it is nice to be able to cast early, but it if you draw it late, and then you cast it, and then you get a creature. So let's say like you have seven and seven resources, you cast an Eye of the Eagle, puts you down to six resources, and you want to play a Brother of the Wolf and a Breaker. But that, that Eye of the Eagle that got you that Breaker, that could have been that Breaker, say, um, makes it so you can't cast them because you just spent one of your resources. So for me, Eye of the Eagle is out until I feel like I need more creatures, which may be the case because I've I, if you watch the Owl stream, there was a couple games where I was just not drawing any any units, and it was kind of a um, kind of a deal breaker. Where if if I'd have been able to put something down, I might have been able to come back, but um, that's that's in the past. So anyway, so this is the list I would play if I were you. So three of all these, and then two Vitality Well, um, just for for safety. Probably once Breaker comes out, that'll change, but. We'll, we'll figure it out. So, All right, gang. That's all I got for now. Um, oh, Ranger's Bane. Ranger's Bane I, I've taken out, I think, in, in favor of Ancestral Totem to go more aggressive. So that that will say, at least these. Woo! Okay. Now we'll say, say we're done. Um, thanks for watching, as always. Till next time.